am never going to have a child. And I think for me to do so would be extremely unethical. Have I got your attention? Okay, good, let's go. My name is Michael, I'm a vegan space scientist. I'm doing a PhD in planetary science. And on this channel, I like to discuss ethics, science, and the intersection between them. Today, I'm talking about why I will never have a child and why I think it would actually be unethical for me to do so. So why am I talking about this today? First, it's still a relatively taboo topic to talk about. Talking about the reason why someone wants to have a child is much more common than talking about the reasons why someone doesn't want to have a child. Childbearing is still relatively the norm, and there is a big difference between how people see the difference between having one child and having no children, and having two children and one child, and so on. This topic is especially taboo, I think, for women to talk about. When some people have found out about my view on having children, they will often say something like, well, you'll grow out of it, you're still young, or you'll find a woman who will want to have children and then you'll want to settle down and have kids. I find these reactions fairly easy to deal with. Even when I tell them, no, that's not the case, and they don't believe me, it doesn't really matter so much to me. My impression based on what several women have told me is that when they tell people that they don't want to have a child, they get a rather different reaction. They're often asked something like, what is wrong with you? This isn't really the response that I've ever gotten as a male. So I think there is a difference between how women and men are treated around this question. I'm talking about this today because I want to share my views, but also it might be beneficial for someone else to hear. Maybe there are other people out there who feel this way, but just haven't been able to talk about it because they think it's just such a fringe view and there's no one out there who thinks the same way. When I first heard Peter Singer's TED talk about effective altruism, I realized that there was a whole community around the world of people who felt and thought like me. And I went from feeling almost a level of shame to feeling connected with this society around the world who felt like me. If I can do that for just one other person about not wanting to have a child, then this video will have been worth it. I'm going to start by talking about what I see as two different categories for reasons of not wanting to have a child, and they are personal reasons and ethical reasons. And I'll talk about why I see these as very distinct from each other. I'll talk about my main reason for not wanting to have a child today, which I have to say is one that I see relatively few other people who also don't want to have a child talk about. This doesn't seem to be the main reason for many other people. I'll talk about some objections that people have to those who don't want to have a child and try and address those. And I'll conclude by talking about not wanting to have a child a little bit more generally. So expanding from how I feel like I ought to act to perhaps how society ought to act ethically speaking. So let me start by saying there has never been a point in my life where I have wanted to have a child. There have been points in my life where I haven't thought about it too much, but I think from quite a young age, I'd say from about 14 years old, I had a clear sense in my mind that I didn't want to have a child. I'm now 27 and I can honestly say that I don't think there has been a point in those 13 years where I have ever regretted that decision or swayed from it in any way. My initial reasons which I still hold today, but I wouldn't call them my main reasons anymore, are uh, I just don't think I would enjoy having a child. I don't think any aspect of the entire process would be enjoyable to me. A lot of people might think that's strange, but it doesn't matter because what I find enjoyable is my own subjective experience. That's not something that other people can necessarily have an opinion on. Just like I can't say, how could you possibly enjoy that? That makes no sense. I don't enjoy that. That's just not the way it works. I don't feel this emotional response that I think a lot of people feel when they see a child. Even some people who don't want to have a child still feel this reaction. So they might look at a human baby and kind of have this like, oh, kind of like cute reaction. I don't really feel that. I don't even really feel that when I look at what is a stereotypically cute non-human animal. I'm not really sure why, but that's just how I've always been, I think. Now, when someone shares a photo of a baby with me, I can appreciate that for other reasons, but I wouldn't look at the photo and think, that's so cute. So those are some personal reasons for not having a child, and now I want to talk about some ethical reasons. As I said, I see these as being two quite distinct topics. The personal reasons are how having a child would affect me. The ethical reasons I see as how having a child would affect the child and affect other sentient minds. Let me define a term called antinatalism. Antinatalism is often used to describe all views that we shouldn't have children. But I'd like to make a distinction in a moment on what I see as the difference between hard and soft antinatalism. So let's first define antinatalism. I'm going to read from my notes. It is a philosophical position assigning negative value to birth and the idea that procreation is morally bad. That's the Wikipedia definition. 
And so if the main reasons for someone not wanting to have a child are just that they personally wouldn't enjoy it, I don't know if I'd necessarily call that antinatalism. I think that's still a very valid reason, but I wouldn't put that with these other arguments. My distinction between hard antinatalism and soft antinatalism is that well, hard antinatalism is the view that birth has a negative value for the individual being born. That is to say that being born can never be good for that individual. Whereas soft antinatalism is the idea that having a child is bad for other extrinsic reasons, whether it's bad for society as a whole, say through some environmental impact, or resource scarcity, whether it's bad for the parents, and so on. I think I would describe myself as a soft antinatalist. I don't subscribe to the view that having a child is always a harm for the child. To back up a little bit, my ethical framework is total hedonic utilitarian. So if a child is born and they have a net positive life, as in they have more pleasure and well-being than suffering, I would think that's a good thing for that individual. Now granted, if that child had more suffering than well-being, I would certainly accept that being born it was a harm for that individual. However, I wouldn't say it's necessarily so. Though I think a hard antinatalist would say that it is always a harm, and I'll try and talk a little bit about that here. David Benatar, I would say, is one of the most well-known antinatalists, or hard antinatalists, in my view. One of his main arguments for this is the asymmetry between pleasure and suffering. I have to admit, I don't think I'm going to give this argument full justice. I think if you want to really get a good sense of David Benatar's views, you can either read about it online, or I can recommend his book, Better Never To Have Been, which I've read and is quite good. It talks a lot about the objections. I agree with some of the aspects of his book, but not the part where he thinks it is always a harm to bring someone into existence for that individual. In short, the asymmetry argument is something like this. Suffering is bad, so avoiding it is good. Happiness is good, but avoiding happiness is only bad if there is someone around wishing for happiness, which doesn't happen if the person doesn't exist. I confess, as much as I love to try and steal man arguments that I don't necessarily agree with, I have a hard time with this one because I disagree with it so strongly. I think that as a total hedonic utilitarian, where the only two things I care about are reducing suffering and maximizing pleasure, it's very hard for me to accept this argument. I've written a little bit more about why I disagree with the asymmetry, Although that was about four years ago, and I don't necessarily know if I would stand by all of those, or think that it's the strongest case against asymmetry. Once again, if you want to know more, I urge you to look at some of David Benatar's work, and I'll certainly link that in the description below. Another argument for antinatalism, which doesn't rely on the asymmetry, and I would put this under soft antinatalism, is the fact that the world isn't great right now, and it probably won't be great any time in the near future, and so it would be bad to bring a child into existence now. I can certainly accept this argument, although with population ethics I must say that it is not so intrinsically clear that that is bad, however that's still not my main reason. There's also the environmental impact of having a child, or the negative impacts of having a child in general, on other lives. So for example, the net emissions that child would produce over their life, or perhaps the impact that that child has on animals, whether they're wild animals through some environmental degradation, or whether they're farmed animals that that child might eat. Before I go on to talk about my main reason for not wanting to have a child, I just want to talk quickly about another thing that David Benatar talks about in Better Never To Have Been, which I actually find quite compelling. And that is this idea that we are fighting against our evolutionary biology. If you think about a gene, it is, as Richard Dawkins would put it, quite selfish. It wants to propagate, in a sense. And so, and so life will evolve to maximize the propagation of that gene. And so it makes sense that humans would therefore be biased, indeed all life forms, towards wanting to procreate. We're just fighting against our natural instinct. And having said that, I really believe that we should be trying to fight against our natural instincts if they don't necessarily serve any valuable purpose. And I think the urge to procreate is definitely something that we should be actively thinking about and trying to fight against. It is a bias, and I think we should be trying to fight against all biases. Now, my main reason for not wanting to have a child, and it has been my main reason for probably about four years now, is that having a child costs a lot of money and a lot of time. In South Australia, where I am right now, last I checked, it costs about four to five hundred thousand dollars to have a child, over, say, about 18 years of raising that child. We're talking about food, clothing, extra housing size, education, and so on. That is a lot of money that could be donated to, say, reducing the suffering of humans or non-humans, or trying to make the future better. So knowing what I know today about how much impact you can have on the lives of others by donating to really effective organizations, I can't help but think about the sacrifice that I would be forcing other people to make 
just so that I can have a child. That's not including even the time. The work that I could be doing with that extra time would certainly have an impact on so many lives, hopefully positive. I'll be the first to admit that I won't necessarily be spending all of that extra time on work. I am almost certain that I'll be spending some of that time on leisure. It's not necessarily something I want to do, but that is the way I am. However, even saying that, I think the extra time and money certainly leads up to an argument where I think it would be selfish for me to have a child, spend that time and money on the child, versus saving other lives, reducing suffering of other lives, whether they're human or non-human. As far as I'm aware, there are very few people who would describe themselves as antinatalists who actually shared this particular view of their main reason for not wanting to have a child. When I lay it out like that, usually they will agree that it makes sense. However, I've been under the impression for some time that I'm one of the only few people who think about this. However, when I did a Google search this morning to see whether there are any academics thinking about this, I found that there are actually a few. Two that come to mind are Stuart Rachels and actually David Benatar as well. And I'll put two links to some papers that they've both written on this exact question. Let's talk about some objections that people might have besides the ones I've talked about already, like you'll change your mind and so on. First is one that's a little bit related to what I just mentioned as my main reason. And that is, well, okay, so you'll get some extra money and time by not having a child. But what if my child is the next great benefactor? What if my child discovers a cure for malaria? Or what if, you know, through my values being imparted on them? And then what if that child makes a bigger difference in their life than donating $400,000 and all that time? So Rachel's calls this the wishful thinking objection. And they say, I'll quote, of course, it is possible that our child would become a great humanitarian. But if we compare the number of well-meaning parents to the number of great humanitarians, we can see how improbable this is. Moreover, we must also consider the possibility of less welcome outcomes. For example, there is around a 1 in 88 chance that a child today will be born autistic. Also, one's child might have a tremendously bad effect on the world, not necessarily due to malice, maybe just due to causal bad luck. I would tend to agree with this. I think it is great and nice to think about the fact that our child might become the next great benefactor or have even a net positive impact in their life, but we can't guarantee that. And I think it is unlikely for a child to have a greater impact than, say, the $400,000 of donating all the time that you're able to commit to other projects. Another objection is that having a child is what gives meaning to life. I would actually reject this as being quite narcissistic. First, the idea that the only way that your life can have meaning and be valuable is to bring a life into this world, I think devalues everything else that we do in this life and all the other ways that we can achieve meaning, whether it's through helping others, reducing suffering and so on. But also I say this is narcissistic because suppose you accept some of the other arguments like it could be a harm to bring your child into the world or it could have a net negative impact on the lives of others, whether directly or by the opportunity cost of what you otherwise could have done with say the time and money. To say that your own personal pleasure, satisfaction, gratification of getting meaning from bringing a child into this world outweighs all of those other considerations I think has to be considered as narcissistic. There are certainly other objections to my main reason of not wanting to have a child, but I think Stuart Rachel's paper does a really good job at addressing these. So rather than just reiterating what they've said, I will refer you to their paper. I have to say that I do feel kind of lucky because I hold the view that I think it is unethical for me to have a child and I also don't want to have a child. I'm lucky because what if it were the case that I really wanted to have a child? for selfish intrinsic reasons, just like I sometimes really want to play a video game, even though I know it probably doesn't have much positive benefit in the world. But what if I really wanted to have a child and held the view that it was unethical to do so? What would I do? I honestly don't know. I would hope that my ethical views would outweigh my selfish views there, but I'm not necessarily convinced. And so I could certainly sympathize with people who have both of these conflicting views, but in the same way that we don't think that, say, the sensory pleasure one gets from eating an animal product outweighs the suffering that the animal experienced over their life of living in a factory farm. I don't think that we can say that the, the pleasure of having a child would outweigh the negative consequences. So now this is bringing me from talking about what I see as being ethical for me to do to what I see as being ethical for other people to do. This is tricky, but I think it has to be obvious, surely, that if I think it's unethical for me to have a child, surely by extension I would think that it is unethical for other people to have a child. This can be a very uncomfortable topic, but it is an uncomfortable topic for me to tell someone who eats animal products that I think their lifestyle is unethical. 
And so I don't think I can shy away from talking about this just because it is uncomfortable. Someone might ask, what do you think about your parents? Do you think they did something unethical? I don't think that my parents were intentionally doing something unethical. I don't think they thought about it in this way. However, despite the fact that I perhaps selfishly think that I will have a positive impact over the course of my life, I would have to say that, yes, on average, it is probably still unethical to have a child. I want to talk a little bit about what I see as the difficulty of admitting that having a child was wrong if you have already had a child. It is difficult enough to get someone to admit that them eating meat for the last 30 years was wrong and to change their behavior. No one wants to think that they are doing something unethical. And so we get into this cognitive dissonance situation where our mind tries to stop us from thinking that by coming up with objections and doing other things. With eating animal products, you can at least stop eating animal products. However, with having a child, you can't stop having a child. So it's a different category of issue, so to speak. I want to read a quote from an interview in The New Yorker with David Benatar, and I think it talks directly to this. David Benatar hears from readers who are grateful to find their own secret thoughts expressed. One man with several children read Better Never to Have Been, then told Benatar that he believed having them had been a terrible mistake. People suffering from terrible mental and physical afflictions write to say that they wish they had never existed. Both of these are surely terrible thoughts to be having. I can't imagine the discomfort that someone might go through if they come to accept that having a child was a harm. Perhaps the framing of unethical is not quite the best framing, no matter how true I think it is. I think a better framing might be whether having a child is a harm to others. Now, you could say this is maybe the same thing, but I think the framing is more on, it's not about you. It's about the effect that you have on others, whether it's your unborn child or whether it's the lives of others. Another quote from that New Yorker article, some years ago, when a fellow philosopher told him, David Benatar, that she was pregnant, his response was muted. Come on, she insisted. You have to be happy for me. Benatar consulted his conscience, then said, I am happy for you. And so I, I think Benatar would agree that having a child can be a good thing for you in a selfish sense, but it's certainly not self-evident that it is a good thing for the child or a good thing for the lives of others in general. There's always a chance that I myself will change my mind on this, or that I want to have a child eventually. Maybe the selfish reasons for wanting to have a child will get stronger, and eventually they'll outweigh my ethical reasons for not wanting to have a child. It's possible. However, you could also say that about my not wanting to consume animal products. There is a chance in the future I will decide to start consuming animal products again. There's a chance of everything. However, my current view is that it is just unethical for me to do so, and so I can't see that happening, even though I think there's a chance. And I feel the same way about having a child. So I think I'll leave it there. I want to say that this has been probably one of the most controversial things I'll have talked about on my channel, especially because of what I've said about whether it is ethical for other people to have children. However, as I've said, I talk about whether it is ethical for other people to eat animal products often and receive relatively less pushback than what I suspect I'll get for this video, I could well be wrong on that. But if I'm not, I want to say that that's fine. I'm happy for people to push back, I'm happy for people to disagree with me and say why that is so. I'm even happy for someone to make the case that it's fine for me to say that myself having a child is unethical, but not fine to say that to other people. I want to make it clear that I almost certainly wouldn't say that directly to someone who has a child or is thinking about having a child. If they asked me for my views, I would probably feel comfortable saying that I think it would be unethical to have a child for these reasons. But having a child just seems to be such a separate category of issue in society that makes it a lot harder to talk prescriptively about it versus, say, other ethical issues. Again, one of my main hopes for this video is that someone has saw this, realized that there are other people who feel as they do, and that they feel a little bit more comfortable in their views. I know a few people whose parents are devastated that they don't want to have a child, and I hope this gives them a little bit of comfort. As one last concluding quote, again from David Benatar's interview with The New Yorker, While good people go to great lengths to spare their children from suffering, few of them seem to notice that the one and only guaranteed way to prevent all the suffering of their children is not to bring those children into existence in the first place. If we really care about our child, we should be thinking about how 
bringing them into existence affects them, not us. So thank you for listening and we'll see you next time.